Hey there, guys, gals, fans, and pals. Your buddy John Megacycle here. Uh, another episode of Factorio coming at you. I've been trying to get into a real train kick lately. Um, I love trains. Let's just put me on the record for that. Love them. Uh, played Transport Tycoon Deluxe when it, like, first came out. When it was literally, like, I, I don't know how to explain it. When it first came out, like, what, like 30 years ago? Something by now? I don't know. Uh, played the heck out of that. Um, the sequel to that was Locomotion, and I don't know if there's been, like, a good spiritual successor to that since, but, um, the root, well, open TTD, for sure, but, um, I really have a strong root background in trains, logistics, and understanding how to get a product or a good or a service from one place to another. Factorio is no different. Factorio actually takes a lot of its train logic from Transport Tycoon Deluxe, um, as I've said in previous videos, like I, I have a bunch of friends that I play Factorio with, but they're just scared of trains. Not, not the fact that trains will run them over, which is obvious, but like how trains work, how trains function, they just don't want any part of it. So I've done a couple of things. Uh, I've made a custom scenario called Factorio TTD, and it incorporates some of the open TTD fundamentals into Factorio uh, because my friends play Factorio, not open transport tycoon deluxe anymore um let's just go ahead and fix that real quick that's kind of no oh, let's get rid of it it's fine <laughs> ignore that don't worry about it so one thing that i wanted to show off today was multiple depots what i have here is i have an iron load i have a few infinity chests so this train will always load up with iron but one of my conundrums is i very lazily want to get this iron to a couple of stations Again, not doing a ton of circuit networking, trying to keep it fairly minimal, but that's kind of how this works. So, I have iron load, this station right here, full of iron plates ready to go. And I have four very lazy stations. You can do what I'm trying to explain with a ton of circuit networking, a lot of logic, but I wanted to do the simplest conceptual idea. So, if we span out... We see iron unload, four of them, they're named exactly the same, and they're all enabled. If a station is disabled, what we'll see is it'll be red. Let's change this to, oh, I don't know, let's just change it to greater. Uh, the station is now in red, it might be really hard to see, but that shows that this station is not accepting any trains, no trains can route to it, or whatever. So I said to myself, I would like to, and we'll go over the circuit networks bits in a bit but i said what if i just like i said lazily i got four net four four routes i want to go to and i want the train to hit all of them eventually there's really no rush but if one of these depots is loaded and it's up to a certain point i want it to stop receiving goods so i want to show you how i do that again this could be done to a very high level with a lot of circuit network and jiggery pokery but i wanted something incredibly simple um, I'm going to stay in map mode because, nope, I thought it was going to be brighter. Let's go to editor mode. That way it can actually stay bright while it's nighttime. And I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. So, I have four stations here. Again, they're named all the same. You can name stations the exact same in Factorio. The train will try to go to any of them with certain conditions all on its own. So, let's say you have ten stations all named the same. That might be really helpful for like a parking garage. If you're like, train, just go to the parking garage. I don't have orders for you right now. Just go to the parking garage and just sit there. And a parking garage is effectively a ton of these little depots with no loading and unloading just to store your trains. <clears throat> it's very helpful, but we don't care which one it goes to. In this case, I kind of care which one it goes to. I want to know which one of these is the lowest and which one is in need of a bunch of iron plates. Now, the only thing we've got going on here is a bunch of unloading and the unload into a steel chest. That's it. But with whatever we're doing after that, let's say we're going to turn the iron into bullets or something. We're going to do something with it after the fact. We can use these chests as a median storage area as a go-between. So what I have is red. Oh, what is it called? Goodness gracious. I can't even remember what it's called right now. Red wire. I was going to say circuit network. Cir circuit network twine is what I was going to call it, but whatever. My brain's on bad today. <laughs> I 
Um, I've got a bunch of these red wires connected to all these chests and the station. What this is doing is this is allowing the contents of each of these chests to be read and put on the network. Right now, by having this hooked up into the train stop, I can make decisions after the fact. So let's go ahead and let me demonstrate a bit better of what I mean. Right now, I've got these chests. I'm going to put a chest inside of it. Now if I look over here at the medium electric pole that's hooked up, it's reading the contents of all these chests, which is just one steel chest. I'm just going to put a bunch of crap in here. And again, we're able to read the contents. Because of that, we're able to make decisions at the train stop. So we're moving iron plates. Basically what I'm saying is, if we have less than 500 iron plates, let the train come here. If we have more than that, disable the route. So I'm going to pull all this off. And I'm going to start the train. And I'm kind of a guy that likes to observe things as they're happening. The train has very simple orders. Go to iron load, wait until full. Then go to iron unload, empty the cargo inventory. Now, again, it can go to any of these four. So let's just start. It's already full. It's now chosen a station it's going to go to. It's going to go here. It's going to unload. And as it's unloading, we're going to see, yep, already the station's disabled. Why is the station disabled? Because I said, until we hit above 499, plates stay open. But after that, close down for business. So right now, this train is going to finish unloading because that was its last order. Once it's done unloading, it's going to leave. But this station stays disabled. Train is going to go back, get a full load, and rinse repeat until all of the stations have their full capacity. Eventually what's going to happen is it's going to go to the third station, the fourth station, and the second station. I don't know why I said it that. Second, third, and fourth. <laughs> it's going to unload the iron, and it's going to disable the, the stations as it goes. The second hits 500 plates. Boom. Disabled. Now, you don't have to build some massive network to make all this function. This is just right here. Red wire or green wire, doesn't matter which one you use, they both function exactly the same. They're different for us humans, so we can differentiate the networks if we want to do, let's say, red for local networks or green for global networks, or however you want to slice and dice it. Me personally, I use green for my global networks, like G for green and G for global. And since red doesn't match with local you know i just whatever so green for me green is global but we have two disabled stations the train is going to rinse repeat get a full load come all the way back move to the third or the fourth and it shows the third one it's going to unload so same thing over and over and over again as the game is playing and we're using this iron i'm just going to emulate taking all the iron oh we've used all that iron for bullets or whatever we can come here and we can see that Oh, there we go. The station is re-enabled because it's run out of iron. So this is kind of a twofold experiment. The first one is demonstrating how you can have multiple stations and how to use them effectively depending on the purpose. And the second one is maybe this is your first step into the circuit networks that you can have intelligence without it being too complicated. Oh, and my inventory is full, but that's okay. So we've opened up the first station for business again. And the train has decided because it's closer, it's going to go back here and drop off more stuff. So, if you have a train with a specific product and you need it to go to every single one, using this circuit network logic, you can limit which ones go to which station or how a train actually handles that or whatever. And this works out very well. Now, from a throughput perspective, from a bandwidth perspective, from a how much are you moving from A to B, this isn't super effective. You should have multiple trains. You should very much designate your networks. They should be very standalone-ish so that way you can get a lot of freight from A to B. But if you just want it to happen at all, just get it to these stations. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Just get it out there. Run the circuit. This is a great way because the train isn't making unnecessary stops. So we're going to see the fourth station will disable itself. The train is going to go back to iron unload, and then it's just going to sit there because there's no valid stations for it to go to. Personally, I find this works out very very well with resupply depots. 
Let's say I've got a frontier outpost and it needs bullets. I can put a logic in here that says train only come out here from under a thousand bullets. Then the train only comes out to the outpost station if I'm actually low on ammo. So now the train is going and filling up. As I mentioned before, because there's no valid stations anymore, this is actually going to not do anything. Train's going to sit here. Train is going to sit here and do nothing until a station becomes valid. So what I'm going to do, just to demonstrate the final step of this, is I'm going to dump off all my iron into the chests. I have a ton of crap in my inventory. Holy crap. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but the map editor and I don't jive. So that's what I got. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to remove all the iron plates from the third station. And that should reactivate the signal. I didn't show it very clearly, I don't think, but all of these are the same. Enable, disable, activated, which means allow this station to be disabled under certain rules. And then also send the contents to the train. Um, this is slightly more advanced, but I don't think this is necessary. I definitely think the enable disabled is necessary. I mean, just set your condition. How long should I wait for how long? And if there's less than 500 iron, enable the station. So I'm just going to plink. And now the station's enabled. Train is on its way. That's all there is to it. It's incredibly simple and a very, very easy way to get started in circuit networks. Getting one train to go to multiple stations reliably. I don't know what else to say. The real simple solution doesn't take a lot of time. A little bit of the circuit network wiring and you're good to go. So thanks for joining me. My name is John Megacycle. Just a quick tutorial on Factorio. Uh, factorial? Factorio tutorial, maybe? I'll think about that one. But anyway, thanks for joining me. And I hope to catch you next time. Hey there, guys, gals, fans, and pals. Thanks for checking out my video. I also want to take a moment to thank all my supporters and donators, and if you'd like to join up with me and Game With My Crew, all the information to get connected is in the description below. Thanks again, and I hope to catch you next time.